And now we're back here on Miss Earth Crown, of course, with our reigning queen, Mina, Miss Earth 2022. So as you can see, uh, we just actually finished a photo shoot and a video shoot with her. You're going to get uh, to see the the shots and, of course, the, the footage in a little, of course, in, in, in a few days, rather, right? So exciting. It's really a beautiful gown yes. by Edwin Uy, by the way. There you go. Thank you so much. Yay. I didn't think I would look good in yellow, but I think... I look pretty good I in yellow. I think you look good on and in everything. I, I think, think yellow just might be the color. Yes, we never know. Again, so we are here with you, um, Mina, to talk more about your journey as Miss Earth 2022. But before that, the fans are, of course, dying to know who you were. Who was Mina before winning the Miss Earth crown? Like, for yes. example, I'm going to ask you, if you weren't doing Miss Earth, what will you be doing? Um, if... I didn't become Miss Earth before. Yes. I would have been a grad student. Okay. I would have finished uh, my undergrad. I still have a semester left. Mm -hmm. So I would have been done with undergrad and I would have been in grad school by now. Okay. Yeah. So you're, where are you currently studying? I'm studying at the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm a communication major. Okay. So communications major and um, um, first that's in a different country. How did you um, end up doing your grad school in another country if you were, of course, from Korea? So originally, my before I even started pageant, um, mm. it was during COVID. I came back to Korea because I didn't want to pay tuition while I was going to be remote mm. and taking remote classes. That's a waste of tuition. Mm. So um, I took a break from school and then my parents and I were discussing what to do after my graduation. Mm. And we were talking about grad school because um, originally I always wanted to go to another school, another like country for studying. Yeah, okay. um, because I've studied in the States for such a long time, I wanted to maybe go to Dubai mm, or okay. like China for grad school. So that's what was on the agenda at the time. But I was like, I feel like I could do something a, a little bit more different. So you were already, you were already studying uh, abroad in, in the U.S. Yes. Before. So I think the one of the things that the fans were actually noticing was that you're of course, aside from the, the, the communication skills, which is impeccable, you speak really great English, of course, <laughs> is that I think culturally speaking, you are such a diverse, dynamic um, yes. human being. Um, tell us your experience about being a Korean, an Asian, studying and living in the U.S. So how was experience like? So my itinerary actually goes back further. Um, I was born in Sydney, Australia. Wow, Hello, okay, Sheridan. further Good day. Day, <laughs> Yeah, my parents studied there and mm. they made a living there. And I was born there and lived there until I was seven years old. Mm. Then I moved to Korea. I went to Korean public school and that's where there I learned most go. of my Korean. Um, and then um, I moved to Canada, lived there for a year, moved to Minnesota, oh, okay. the States, and lived there for two years. Yeah, okay. And then moved back to Korea, went to international school this time because I started getting more comfortable with English. Wow. Like all my academics were in English. And then I moved to China, to Shanghai. <laughs> so um, you've been around. Yes. And okay. I stayed there only for a year. Okay. Um, and then I came back to Korea, finished my um, high school. And mm -hmm. then I went to university to the United States. Okay, that's yeah. really interesting to, um, to note, Nina. Because, I mean, being around the world, like, and not only visiting and traveling, you stayed and lived in uh, different countries across yes. the world. How did that shape you into the person and woman that you are right now? Um, I think it's similar to what I talked about on the coronation night. Mm. Um, for my final answer, I talked about empathy. And mm. how I got that value, that became such an important value to me, is yeah. because I started understanding that when we encounter misunderstandings and miscommunication, it's not necessarily because they're a bad person or because I'm a bad person. It's because we're simply different and we were raised in a different environment and different. we had different experiences. You that's are, why yes. it's so something that's normal to them might not be normal to us. Mm. And if we just have that in mind, if we can just take a step back and see the world in their shoes, how they were raise how huh? what kind of life they might have had then we would probably encounter less miscommunication misunderstandings and even conflicts and that's why I feel like when I moved around a lot I encountered so much of that that mm. it has become such a core value to me and I think that's why um, on the coronation I talked about empathy that it's important to be empathetic um, to solve an issue like any issue in this world and I felt like I wanted to tell the world a glimpse of the person I am and it just resonated perfectly so that's why i was like that one answer would show the world the person i am and how to solve a huge issue 
Yeah, I, I actually love hearing that because it now gives a deeper meaning into your answer in the coronation night, yes. right? Because um, people would, of course, at first, at, at first uh, glance would say that, okay, that's a great answer, right? But then hearing your story and hearing that being a global citizen, so to say, it helped you into like molding into your values and yes. actually um, applying them in real life, right? But then we're going to talk more about the coronation and your answer in a little bit, yeah. no? But I'd like to ask, for example, your friends are going to reveal something about you, okay? Who is Mina without the crown, without the sash, you know, sans the, the makeup and the, the glam? Who is she in real life? Um, <laughs> she is... I think my friends, a lot of my friends would say the same thing. I'm a bubbly, genuine, mm -hmm. um, weird, funny person. Mm -hmm. I think that's how my friends would describe me. Yeah, because I'm usually pretty goofy around my friends and um, I like weird things. I like trying unusual things, new things. Um, yeah, I think that's why. So I think growing up, I was made fun of a lot of times mm. for being kind of like that, she's kind of pretty, but she's kind of weird. I've always heard that. <laughs> There's also a disclaimer life. there. Yeah, but you know, I I think it's unique. That's why I stand out, and that's what makes me a bit special. And a lot mm. of people actually like that side of me because even though at times when I don't talk at all, a lot of people find me intimidating. I don't think any mm. Filipinos find me intimidating, but sometimes people found, find me a little bit intimidating. But mm. um, because I make others feel comfortable, and I'm mm. so honest that um, I think I tend to blur those um, barriers, those boundaries. There so I like that. Oh, yeah. love that. Now, what is like a typical day like in the life of Mina before Miss Earth? Like, for example, we're gonna do like an itinerary of your activities the okay. entire day. What uh, do you do first thing in the morning and then before you go to sleep? Hmm. If it was back in school, mm. I would. It's such a long time ago. I think. <laughs> I wake up in the morning. I make food. Um, I live by myself in the states, mm, okay. and I live. Um, and I would cook by myself and I still remember I cooked bacon <coughs> in the morning and then I forgot that it would just since I lived in a studio the kitchen was connected to my bedroom and my mm. closet so all my clothes smelled like um, bacon <laughs> and I went to class and the other girls and guys were just kind of sniffing around like <laughs> oh my god and in the beginning I was like what's happening and then five minutes later I realized oh no there was a smell of bacon around <laughs> and then yeah and then after class, I would um, get lunch, go back, so like, like work a regular, out. Like a Sorry, it's so student. boring. Yeah. It's like a regular, like, like a typical boring day as yeah. a student, right? Because I feel like a lot of people think I yeah. am like a model and exactly, I have like exactly. a special life. By Were you a model, like a working model before? Oh, no. No, okay. No, not at all. Not at okay. all. That's why I think a lot of people look at my Instagram and they tell me, oh, she's such a simple girl. Yeah, I, that's no, why people no tell glam me a lot. Or whatever. Yeah, so simple, but it's because I've never really done photo shoots um, until I did Miss Korea yeah, okay. at my first start. All Before right. that, I was just, yeah, girl that kind of yeah. likes nature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. That's yeah. actually a surprising thing that you mentioned because for, at first glance, you like really scream model, scream beauty queen, scream like. Miss Korea. Yes. Like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> segue now to, uh, that's a perfect segue for us. How did you end up being like a typical student in the US? Yeah. How did you end up in pageantry? Right. So this, and I don't think it's that long of a story, but so mm. what happened was it, w it happened during COVID. Mm -hmm. During COVID, I had to come back because again, I didn't want to pay my tuition. So I came back to Korea and I was staying with my parents and they were like, you can't just take a gap year and not do anything. Mm, so they okay. were telling me I should go to China for like ex language exchange because I was studying Mandarin at the time. Mm -hmm. And since I was, the long-term goal was to go to grad school to China or wherever, and a third language Chinese would be pretty mm -hmm. beneficial in the long Correct, run. Of so that was a plan, but I wanted to try out something new, completely different, something out of my comfort zone or something that I would never imagine myself doing. Okay. And one day I remember my friend, little sister became Miss Korea. I just saw that and I was like, <laughs> I just didn't think that was an international student or like our thing of yes, this generation yes, yes. because Korea, I told, like I mentioned way before, um, 
pageantry has died out down in mm -hmm. Korea a lot. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So I thought it's gotten forgotten, but <clears throat> when I was younger growing up, older people, like my grandparents would tell me, oh, Nina has a tiny face and she has long legs and long arms, so she should become Miss Korea. <laughs> so that's like, a, that's like a Korean saying. It's like, ah, Miss Korea, but not Oh, okay. It's like you should try for Miss Korea. Okay, so yeah. you no, you normally um, get that uh, got that in your in your yeah. younger years. Yeah, not when I was in high school because I was mm -hmm. yeah. But when I was a lot younger, um, a lot of elders would say that to me. So it's always been in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. but I have never really put into action or put into like thought that yes. deeply. But during the COVID period, I was like, wait, might as well like let's do that. Correct. So. I was like, I wanted to do it. I told my parents, and in the beginning, my parents thought I was joking, so they were like, yeah, yeah, you should definitely try it. I was like, no, I'm serious. I really want to do it. Because okay. I didn't want it to be something like, um, a, later in life when I'm 50, 60 years old, Correct. some people are just like, oh yeah, Mina thought about uh, trying out but for pageants. That's yeah. how pretty she was. You know, and why, why say that when you can just be Miss Korea or like Miss Earth? Yeah. So that's why I told my parents I want to do it. And then my parents were actually against it. Okay, your parents were against it. In the beginning, yes. Okay, why were they against it? If, uh, if you were getting a lot of this, uh, these compliments and the encouragement from other people, why were they against it in the first place? I think it's because since I'm an only child, my parents okay. still see me as a baby. They're like, Mina can't handle something like that because they know how competitive it gets with mm. a group of girls. Even though we're all individually, <clears throat> we're nice people when it's a group and we're all competitive and we're all like sensitive, then uh, you know people get hurt by small things and by like chatters behind the mm, scenes, you of know, course. things like that. And like I mentioned before, when I was younger, um, I was like, kind of mistreated or like bullied yeah. here and there because I'm a pretty but weird person <laughs> at a okay. time. So um, because of that, my parents were very concerned mm. about me. So you're just really protective of yeah. your what's They're going to happen to you and in the long run, if it's yeah. going to have a good effect on you. Exactly. And my dad, I, I still remember my dad told me, um, he was like, you know, you, you're pretty, but there are so many girls that are prettier and they're, that are so pretty. It's like, you can't just survive this. You won't win this just because you're pretty. And then okay. you have to have like your own story. You have, a, have to have your own narrative and you have to be, you have to have that. Mm -hmm. and, and then I genuinely told my dad, I think I have it. And then he was, are you serious? I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, and he was very disapproval of it. In the beginning, for first one month, he was mm -hmm. kind of against it. Um, whenever I was meeting my friends, my dad would just be like, I thought you wanted to become Miss Korea. Oh and, and then he was on me, and then he saw how much effort I put in during mm -hmm. that time as well. I was, um, I was just working very hard, but yes. usually when I put my mind into it, I work very hard. So when I was crowned Miss Korea back then, mm -hmm. my dad was like, I knew it. <laughs> he, he, he I knew it from the very beginning. Yeah, had like, it, my child. And, and then I told my dad. I thought you said you you doubted me. I was like, yeah. I said that because like I didn't want you be, yes. to be disappointed, but correct, I never correct. doubted you. Okay, yeah. so that's a very interesting story. Yes. It's very. Um, we never knew that behind that journey, behind your story, there was uh, this thing about your family. But then, yeah. Uh, again, I'm gonna ask how did they turn around their you know, their mindset about the the whole thing. But then, in the long run, of course, you had to represent the the country in Miss Earth. Yeah. Were they already supportive, hundred percent, or were they still really skeptic of your journey? What was it like? Actually, already? my parents were very supportive. Yeah, you um, They were supportive at this point. They were like, "There's um, if there's a candidate from Korea, representative <coughs> from Korea, Mina's the most suitable candidate." That's what they always thought. So they were so happy to hear that I was competing in Miss Earth. But I just didn't have enough resources or information about yes. Miss Earth because Korea we haven't done that well in pageantry so yes, yes. there's no one that could really guide me through the process Correct. even though my I have like a coach for Miss Korea mm. but it's, Miss Korea is very local so it's very different from uh, international pageants so it's very domestic and there's like a specific style so mm. it's very reserved 
So, so um, Miss Korea is like a more reserved, like 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 a show show type um pageant. How is it? Uh, maybe we can walk us through. Yeah. What yeah. is like Miss Korea like? First of all, the catwalk is completely different. Yeah, okay, that's you, really interesting. You I need to be us. reserved. You need to. A lot of girls would either hold their dress like this, like that, okay. and then slowly walk. <laughs> okay. Or or they would um hold the dress like this. So, okay, okay. Yeah, but here it's like you gotta power walk, you gotta show yes. how empowering you are. And I was the only one that had her dress let go and walk. That's why oh. I stood out a lot. Even though I wasn't that good, but still I let my hand go and I power walked. Mm. So I was known for that girl that power walked through there you go. all my catwalks. I yeah. love that. So okay. that's a little bit different. And I think the Q&As are similar. We mm -hmm. usually tackle social issues and they test your intelligence, what, how much you know about the current happenings current. around the world. So those are all pretty there. Mm -hmm. And also even for those Q&A, um, I, I sounded very genuine. I wanted to sound as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. So I tried not to prepare too much. Even though I prepared them, in real life, I couldn't even say that. Mm -hmm. I, I would just say what was on my mind, not what I remembered. So I remember that's why during Miss Earth too, I didn't mm. really memorize my thoughts yes. or my responses. Um, if anything, I try to think about like my thoughts. So my, what are my values and what are the current issues? I just try to study them instead of just Yes, and that's exactly how you do it. Yes. I mean, in reality, that's how you do it. I mean, these fashion girls, they've been training for many years. They, I think they just overdo things yes. without like thinking that, okay, I have to step back. I have to like, just, you know, let my inner voice and core speak for me. Yes, right? exactly. And that, I think that's what you were able to do during yeah. the coronation night. Now yeah. we're just going to talk about your journey in the Miss Earth, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too sure if you're aware that Miss Earth it's a big pageant here in the Philippines. The pageant fans, the Earthlings are crazy about Miss Earth. Were you aware of the amount of attention you're going to get prior to going to no. the Philippines? Okay. No, definitely not. Mm. So I remember when um, people, my dad kept on telling me, my dad was my number one supporter. So he would, he was basically my media team. He kept on <laughs> checking what was on like nice. the, the list because they would post things like top 10. Yes, yes, I don't, yes. What, what is that called again? Yeah, the hot picks. Hot yeah. picks Maybe they, your dad had already seen the hot picks of Miss Earth Crown. Yeah, yeah. they were saying, <laughs> Nina, they're going crazy about you. I was like, okay. They haven't seen me in real life. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I, I didn't listen to my dad. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I would have like fans in yes. the Philippines. I didn't think I was that like, well mm -hmm. known within the competition 2022 Miss Earth. Yes. And I think up, it took me a while to realize that, oh, wait, I'm actually like kind of on the leader side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when uh, I think it was like our first competition, uh, the bikini round. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the. The round that I realized. The wait, one in Zamwanga, right? Yes, yeah. I got a goal for that. And I remember I was like, it's not going to be me. Yeah. And then it was me. So I was so shook. Yeah. I remember being very surprised. And after that, I kept on winning. So I was like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so you, um, going, in, uh, going to the Philippines and going into the competition, there were no expectations of you or no any, um, there were no, uh, how, how do you say this? There were no, pre there's no pressure um, in you to really perform and really win any of these competitions? I, I did have, and I did think I was doing well, so I thought, to be honest, like after the prelims, I did think, I was hoping I could at least get into the, the top four at least. Yeah, okay. But my ultimate goal has been winning Miss Earth though in yeah, the beginning, because I feel like when you begin something, when you're competing in something, you need to at least tell yourself you're competing for a number one spot. I love even if, that. Even love if you're that. gonna be good for like top four, top three, I think your mindset should be, I'm gonna win this. Exactly. That's like, in that way, you put in that much effort and energy. And if you get second place, yeah, give yourself a pat and then like, you know, reflect on the things you could have improved on. Correct. But still the goal should be number one, I think. I love that. It's a winner's mindset that you shared. I really love hearing that from you. But then I'd like to ask now, um, of course, there were a lot of activities. Yes. Um, some of the activities were posted online. The, of course, the medal tallies were posted and were um, given updates um, by the, the pages, the fan pages. But then if there's one thing that fans do not know that, um, is ha that was happening behind the scenes that you girls, only you girls know about, what is one thing you can share to the fans? 
Hmm. I mean, I think everyone knew that I was sick during the competition. Mm, yeah, okay. yeah. I think I mentioned that so many times. Yeah, in the yeah. But then, of course, prior to that, we didn't we didn't know that you were sick. Yes. Right? Um, I what was, really happened? Maybe we can just um, tell I, the story there. I think I was food poisoned or I had gastritis oh just the day before. I was feeling, I was beginning to feel a little sick like two days before the coronation night. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. Maybe I'm just tired. But mm. I felt burned out at one point because I've been putting my 100% in all the course, competitions. Yeah. And then towards the end, I started feeling sleepy and tired and I never felt that I'm very energetic and I mm. ate a lot I ate a lot during Miss Earth. So I thought I was fine but just two days before I started getting a small stomach ache during mm. rehearsals and then just the day before I wasn't feeling well so I had to go oh back to the God. hotel. I couldn't go to Okada for rehearsals. So, so you weren't there during the rehearsals? Yeah, the day before oh I, I wasn't so I was so worried. So I, I knew that I had to go to at least one last for rehearsal. It's very important during right? the coronation night the morning morning but in the morning I, I woke up and I wasn't oh my feeling God. well. So the first time that you um, got into the stage, uh, got onto stage for the coronation was actually during the show itself? Yes. Oh my God. That yeah. is Oh my God, I just got chills. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, it's all right now. Okay. Yeah. So again, that's a very important thing that you noted, that you shared with us because um, we that's going to of course affect your chances of, of course, and your mindset of performing yeah. during coronation night. So getting into coronation night, knowing that you were sick, you weren't able to rehearse. Yeah, and I went to the ER on the day of oh my competition gosh, okay. day. What was the mindset like getting into the Miss Earth stage or yeah. the coronation? So we, um, starting from the emergency room, I was, at that point, I was, I have to go to rehearse or else I'm not going to know anything. I'm not going to know where to, I, I knew the entire like move, entire like exactly, the yeah. structure. But I just didn't know the entrance and things the like that. The blockings, right? Exactly. So I, I just had to know those. So I told my dad, like, after I got my IV, I was like, I have to go. If I don't go right now, I'm not going to know anything. Oh my God, I already got IV already. Yeah. So I went to rehearsals and then everyone knew I was sick. I just, I just looked like a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I recall Miss Earth, um, Belarus, okay. just telling me. Lilia, her name's Lilia. She uh, told me that Mina, you're gonna you're gonna do well, so you have to push through. You have to push through. You wow. are gonna do well, so you have to push through. You know, Belarus has been uh, has been one of the darlings of yes. Miss Earth 2022, right? It's uh, also a great thing that you share that because um, it's gonna make the fans love her even more, yes. right? And when you heard that from Belarus, what was now the mindset? The I, you know, part of me because I was sick and I knew in the back of my mind that I was doing so well mm. and I could feel it. You know, you can start feeling that towards the end. You're like, I think you're a potential candidate. Yes, yes. I started feeling that, but I suddenly got so ill, right? So part of me felt like, what if other people are happy about it? What if my competitors um, oh, no. that I'm competing with are happy about it? So part of me was kind of scared and I was like, what, what if they're mm -hmm. like that? Um, and the fact that Lilia told me uh, that I have to push through because I love that I want. She told me straight up, she, I want you to win. Oh my and that's God. a very difficult thing to tell someone when you're competing in the same pageant. Exactly. That you want someone. You think someone is more deserving, and you want that person to win. That's that's crazy. And when she told me that on the coronation night, um, it gave me a lot of energy. Yeah. So I think I pushed through even during rehearsals. Like when we were off stage, I was dozing off. But when we were doing rehearsals on stage, I tried to put in my 100%. And I remember one of the videos went viral, the one that I was dancing during rehearsals. But I remember being feeling so sick, oh but I was God. still pushing through. Yeah, And I had like a bag, a plastic bag in the back of my pocket, oh, wow. just in case I threw up on stage. But also I knew that on the night of the coronation night, I had to do well and I have to push through because, you know, there's so many people involved in the production of Miss Earth Competition Coronation correct, Night. Correct. There are lightings, there are people that choreographed, there are girls that are just trying to shine on this day. Mm -hmm. And if I, you know, faint on the stage or throw up on the stage, then it's going to... Yeah, that's ruin, going to be your story. Yeah, and it's going to ruin their moment. Exactly. That's what I was most worried about. Mm -hmm. So um, my mindset after I got my makeup done and everything, I was just telling myself, I just need to push the... I just need to show them my 100%, just finish 
through and because that time I couldn't prepare for the interviews at that point mm -hmm. yeah someone told me one of the fans messaged me and said <laughs> they were gonna ask me very very hard questions so I was so worried <laughs> so I was studying like Lenino um, and then I was just you're, are you already I, sick and then your mental yeah, stress come, uh, kicks in right I still remember I was in one of the managers room because I was so sick I couldn't share the room with my roommate mm. that time I was just on my phone looking up googling oh my <laughs> god rooters current <laughs> environmental issues I was like I was just checking just in case I got those um, questions but so was it like this, any, anything what was anything like uh, getting into your head during that time you were no but I had to just look at it I <laughs> yeah was like, okay what is this what is this mm. um, so um, but during the coronation I wasn't even concerned about that because yeah. I thought what I might not even get into top 20 at that mm -hmm. point that like part of me worried about it of course. yes but but then of course you got into the top 20 and then is it top a top is that is it like a big cut yeah. already top a right and then when you are already getting higher placements are we already we were feeling more confident already was your um was a physical like a difficulty starting to get out of your body is it a well the moment i went on stage um, when they were introducing all the countries, mm. that's when I felt okay. I think it was an adrenaline rush. Mm, I didn't yes. feel the pain, but towards the end, because we were standing for such a long time, and my dress was, my gown was insanely <coughs> heavy. It was so heavy. Okay. Yes. So I, I remember I started getting a little bit lethargic. My body kept on slouching mm. a bit, so my posture was so bad. I remember being so embarrassed when I saw the video, but. Um, one thing I, I still recall is they kept announcing Korea at the very end. So <laughs> you, I had, you had to wait. I, I was the last one just standing there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is it. This is my end. This is my end. It's over for me. It's been a good ride. Goodbye. And then they would call my name. Okay. Yeah, always, I, I would always be the last one. Yeah, so I, I do remember that. Yeah. But, and when we started speaking though, mm. I think that was around I was most confident. In. Yes, I'd like to talk about that because um, the fans were raving about your answer to the final question. I mean, it wasn't of course like the typical rehearsed fashion patty answer, right? And they loved it. They loved it. Um, again, we talked about that a little bit during the, your, the, your answer for um, your being a global citizen and whatnot. Mm. But then, what was the thing that you went into your head first thing that went out of your head first uh, um, when you answered that question the so the question itself was so long mm, exactly it was confusing yeah so it was <laughs> in the beginning it was if you were to write something in this world yes. uh, how would you write it and then you know people kept on getting mixed up between right it's and in right, right right yes and there so um, but did you get it the first time yeah if you ask it or, in, or the first time yeah, I actually did get yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I <laughs> Mental resilience at its best. <laughs> yes, I did hear it, but I just needed a, a definite answer. Mm -hmm. So I asked again. And then, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because it feels, I know it's a very short time. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was only a few seconds, but to me, it feels like 30 seconds. Correct. It correct. feels like a very, very long time for mm -hmm. me to think of an answer. So, yeah. And yeah, again, it was that, that a little bit strategic, but yes, <laughs> okay. And of course, that answer on empathy that was um, it was a viral and you know, trending answer during that time. Were you proud of your response to that to that question? I was so proud of myself okay. because um, after my answer, I looked at my dad. Mm. My dad, I could see my dad. Were, he were they like, watching? He was watching. There, yeah. He was on the spot, it, even for the hashtag round. Um, when it's top eight, we had the hashtag round. And top four, we had the final answer. And for the hashtag round, I remember answering, and then I looked at my dad, like this, like, and then he just gave me a nod. Great. And then after I gave my final answer, I saw my dad, and I felt like this time it, he looked like he was touched. That's oh why I was, I I was touched by my own answer because I just thought. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell people. This is what I wanted to communicate to a large group of people if I ever got the chance to, and I really did it. So I was just happy that I was able to push through my answer. Um, very concise, but very straightforward. Exactly. So um, straight from the heart. Yeah, and my dad's facial expression was just 
he looks like a proud dad. So I love um, with the I love hearing what you said about um, your answer coming from somewhere real in your life, yeah. somewhere sincere, because as Miss Earth 2022, that's what you you need to do all throughout your year, right? Yes. Like talk about um, environmental issues, but it has to come from a, a place that is real, right? Yes. Right. So in terms of your journey, Amina. Um, what is now the plan? Now that you have the title, that you shared the, uh, the incredible journey, the dynamic and colorful journey that you had at, as Miss Earth 2022, what are now the plans? What's going to happen in the next few months for you? Few months. Um So during my reign mm -hmm. as Miss Earth, I hope to not only discuss my advocacy, but what I learned during the Miss Earth entire process is mm -hmm. that when we combine all the advocacies together, we're all really sending it the same message about yes. social injustice, social issues, because they're all intrinsically related to each other, right? Exactly. Um, I remember my uh, roommate, Miss Earth Iran, her name's Maru. Mm -hmm. She discussed um, women's right issues in her country. And then I suddenly had this realization that I've been so unaware and I was mm -hmm. so ignorant because I've only been living in cities my entire life. Mm -hmm. So in my head, um, you know, solving mobility issues, Correct. like those with congestion issues, those would just solve everything. But what? how can countries that don't have the most important like human mm -hmm. rights even prioritize environmental issues Correct. so i started having those <clears throat> realizations as i heard other girls scream out their advocacies so i definitely am in need of more studying and more Correct. listening even though i'm i'm a spokesperson what's important about communication and what's about important about influence is that you also listen to one another and yeah. you know what what you shared just now it just goes back full circle to what you shared at the beginning of this interview if you were going to like notice it your experience as a global citizen as a woman of the earth so to say now that you have this platform it's all about listening to to one another and ex like learning from each other yes right because i always hear with pageant queens we're always they're saying spokesperson you always speak you are always yes. telling people but i think it's also important that since we have mm -hmm. power and giving someone else that chance to hey i have this influence but Correct. i want to listen to you i think Love that, that would also make a huge difference yeah not just being a spokesperson but then someone a spokesperson who listens yeah has to be a listener you have to be a listener yeah. love that now one last question queen mina what are you most excited about 2023 is just going to happen for you. What are, what's the one thing you're most excited about? For I'm your definitely journey? excited to do a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. If our schedules align, I'm so excited to visit countries and see say hi to my Miss Earth sisters that Yay. I in 2022. I'm so excited for that. And I hope I can meet more sisters during the journey and we can share more about the things that we're passionate about and yes. their experiences for the past few months and i hope to discuss more about our advocacy yes. and discuss what are their future plans and really do you know like a combined project together things like yeah. that and we're excited for that you know what we can't wait the earthlings also can't wait for your journey we are going to give you now an opportunity mina to say thank you to all of your fans across the earth the floor is yours right now. Okay. 안녕하세요. This is your 2022 Miss Earth, Mina Su Choi. Just want to say thank you for your support and your love throughout my entire journey. And this is just the beginning of my chapter and my journey. So I hope you guys can stay present in my journey. And I hope to stay present in yours as well. Yay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, our current Miss Earth 2022, Mina from Korea, once again, maraming salamat from us at Miss Earth Crown. Carousel Productions, maraming salamat din po. Again, as Queen Mina mentioned, this is only the beginning of her journey. So stay tuned, guys, to Miss Earth Crown because we're going to cover more of her travels, more of her projects only on MEC. This is Noy Sobelano, your uh, chief correspondent for Miss Earth Crown, saying bye-bye and have a great day, everyone. Maraming salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat po.